Kim Batals are the oldest clay tile manufacturer in the UK. We can date our history back to 1588. We use wheeled clay, which is only found in the south of England. It runs in a vein through the south of England. And we've moved four times because we run out of clay. So every time we run out of clay, we follow the vein, we find a new location, and we start making tiles again. We're currently making tiles at our factory in Ewhurst, which is near Horsham in Surrey. And what we like to do is when we get new clients, we like to invite them to come down to the works to have a look around the factory and even make their own roof tiles so that the roof tiles they're making themselves can actually be put up on their roof, which is pretty cool. We, we love doing stuff like that. We are the major sort of contributor in this country for clay roof tiles. Uh, we're the largest manufacturer with the biggest history uh, dating back to 1588. But we also have a heritage service. Sort of only in the last 20 years we've been doing it, but we, we did it on the request of architects who had bespoke projects with roof tiles and fittings that are no longer manufactured on our historic vernacular. So we come in, we actually make these tiles, we develop them, we do design on them, and technical work, and work with the specifications with the architects and historic bodies such as English Heritage and the National Trust. So this is a Kima traditional Elizabethan tile, and this is one of the colours of the tiles that was used when we did Queen's College on both Docket Building and the old courtyard. And as you can see from each tile, they're, they're quite rustic, they're all individually handmade, and we can tell they're handmade because when you turn them over, each tile has a handprint which is put there by the maker of the tile. And people think this is a gimmick, but actually we need the handprint to be able to press the tile out of the mould. They throw sand on the mould, they put it in, they press it down, and to press it out of the mould they have to actually slam it to get it onto the drying racks. So every single Kima tile that you find will have a handprint of the maker who made the tile in the back of it. A lot of the problems with listed properties is they may have an historic roof. They may have roof tiles that go back 100, 200 years sometimes. Now those tiles are no longer in manufacture. Working from a sample from the roof, we will develop that tile, keep the style of the tile. The profile is important, the colour is important and the texture because they're historic buildings, you know, they have to look right. So that's where we come in. We'll develop that tile, we'll manufacture it, and we'll supply it, whether it's one tile or 100,000. We work with architects. They come to us and they say, we've got a building, we've got a vision, we've also got a design that we have to work with. So we'll say to them, right, this material will work well with that building. You know, sometimes they want to put slates on, they want them to put clay on and we say, well, this will work, that won't work. Technically, sometimes uh, an architect would say, I want to put a low pitch on this building, and we put clay roof tiles on, and we say, no, it won't work. It's got to be 40 degrees or more. So we actually work with the architects and sort of help them to understand their vision and what is required. We don't only do historic buildings. We actually work with architects on contemporary buildings. We work with them because they want a facade that's going to be soft and natural. It's got to work with that historic environment or a natural environment. So they will have the roof tiles, they'll have bricks, or they'll have hanging clay tiles. They'll actually blend in and work with the natural surroundings. A number of our clients come to us where they're requesting a bespoke finial or roof fitting such as the one behind me. This is a dragon finial. I've carved this from a solid block of clay. It'll probably take me about two days to carve it, but the actual process is a lot longer afterwards of that. I've got to very carefully dry it. I'll actually, as the piece is drying out, hollow it out, and this could take up to three months. I will then fire it on our longest cycle, which will be eight days, and then so we're looking probably at about four months from the original starting point.